Everything's working. Ha! Okay, here we are. So happy after spring break. It is April 4, 12, 2021. Today, our objective really is to talk about inverse variations, okay? Inverse variations. Okay. So as x gets big, y gets small. So x gets big, y gets small, and vice versa, okay? So an inverse variation, we kind of saw in our warm-up today that it comes in these equations, x times y equals some number. We're going to say that number is k. k is just a number. It's a number like, like 12, right, or like 24. We did it in our warm-up that k was 20. Well, I should have said 24, you guys. That's okay. It's early for all of us. x times y equals 24, and that's what we did on a warm-up. And this one, x times y equals negative 24, so it equals some number. And that's called the um, variation constant, okay? So that's our variation constant is this number, okay? Um, we saw in a warm-up... As an example, we had x times y equals 24. And we did our warm-up. We saw that our graph, graph looked like that, right? As x got big, y got small, right? So that's why it's called an inverse variation, OK? Um, it could also be written as y equals 24 divided by x. It's another way to write this. Um, and then one of the things we can't do is divide by zero. We've kind of talked about that a little bit, and that proves that it can't equal zero. Now, we also have a direct variation, which is different. Am I going too fast or am I okay? Okay, inverse variation. X, Y equals some number. As one gets big, the other gets small. But direct variation is they both get big together. Direct variation is basically Y equals some KX. I'm going to have you put plus zero. Plus, you'll never see the plus zero, but I want you to put plus zero because there's two things that happens. One, this direct, it is a straight line. Okay, it's a straight line, and it goes through zero. It has to go through the zero, zero. Okay, write that down. Here's an example of direct variation. Okay, you're, you're in your car and you're driving 60 miles an hour, okay? Every hour you go 60 miles. Every hour you go another 60 miles. So it's directly, as you, as time increases, your distance increases. Does that make sense? They're both going up at the same time, okay? So, let's take a look at whether these are direct variations or inverse variations. You kind of got the idea. So number one, well, that's gotta be inverse. We see x, y equals a number, right? See that x, y? That has to be that one right there. That one's got to be inverse variation. Am I making sense? Am I going too fast? How am I doing? Thumbs up. Okay, there's one thumb up. X, Y, it's got to be the inverse variation. X times out Y equals negative 12 is definitely inverse variation. Now, example 2 is a little bit tricky, but what I might do with example 2 is I might solve for Y. If I solve... For y, let's see, minus x minus x, right? And I get y equals negative x plus zero. Okay. Put one here. If I were to graph this, if I were to graph it, you don't have to, but if you were to graph it, it looks just like that. Start at zero, down one over one. That one's got to be a direct variation because it's straight, right? And it goes through zero, zero. Okay, so that was definitely a direct variation. Now, this one's a little bit tricky, and I'm going to show you two ways. But one, it looks, believe it or not, like if I solve for it, remember, like this one here? I've got the y equals, but this is 5 over x. And another way I can do it is multiply up the x. If I multiply the x, 
it could be, if I multiply up the x, it could be 5 equals xy, which is in the same form as my inverse variation, okay? Okay. Well, example four, with that plus four here, it's going to mess everything up. This plus 4 just messes up, so it's neither, right? It's neither. It can't be an x, y equals something. Um, it would be a straight line, but it's going to go through 4, so this one's going to be neither. All right? If I tried to solve for y, it would look like this. It would be a 1 half x plus 2 equals y. That would be a straight line, but it would go through 2, okay? So it to be direct, it's got to go through 0. Okay, example five. Let's see, if I were to try and simplify this a little bit, if I multiply by 4x, let me rewrite this so it makes it look better. I'm not much, my typing skills are limited. That's the way it should look, but I can't type it very well. But if I were to multiply both sides by 4x, right, I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 48x. Oh, see, at first I thought that was neither, but now I'm looking at it and it looks like direct, right? It's got a number here. I, I put the invisible zero there to help me out. So that one's definitely direct variation. That one almost tricked me, huh? Not really. Direct variation. Okay, so let me re recap what we've got, okay, before I completely confuse you, because I know it's Monday after spring break, okay? So let's go back. If it is, x times y equals some number, it's inverse variation, and then the graph looks like this. Thumbs up, does that make sense? So it's x times y equals some number, it's inverse. And then, for example, on this one, if x, y equals some number, it's definitely okay. If it is just y equals some number, it's like, it's like y equals mx plus zero, and it's like the slope, it'd be a straight line, be a straight line, and it's gonna be I direct as one's, this one is one's going down, the other's going down, okay? Now, turn the page. Now, there's two ways to do example six, and some kids actually do better to graph it, um, and if you can't see it, it's okay, but if you graph it, it sometimes it's easier to graph it, but I'm going to do a real quick graph on, number this, on this one right here. So, if I were to graph example six, um, I might go by tens on the y, ten, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? And I might go by, on the x's, I might go just by 2's, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I just want to get an idea of what it looks like, because I don't know if this, which one this is, okay? So if I got graph point at 2, 4 might be right about there, 4, 16 might be about there, 6, 36, 10, 20, 36 is here. 864 is up here. Huh, what do you guys think? What's that? What's going on here? Anybody have an idea what's going on? Look at these numbers. Anybody see anything about these numbers? Anything? Do you see anything unique about those numbers? Yeah, they're squared numbers, aren't they? Isn't this 2 squared, 4 squared? 6 squared, so it's neither. In fact, this equation is y equals x squared equation, which is neither my, neither my um, indirect, my inverse, or my direct, so this one's neither. Nice job, Edie. Doesn't work, does it? In fact, if you were to keep graphing, it looks like this. It's going to have a curve, right? All right, now, how about this one, 7? Okay, I'm going to graph 7 because I'm not sure what 7 looks like, so sometimes it's the only way to do it, okay, so 50, huh, well, okay, let's just go 10, 20, 30, 40, I just want to get an idea what it looks like, 50, and I'll go like 10, 20, 30, so I'm going to graph a point at 1, 5, I'll estimate 1, 5, 5, I'm going to go now 5, 1. I'm going to go 8 and point and 20 and point and 15 point. And then 
Let's see, this almost looks like this, doesn't it? Almost looks like that. Well, that looks like it's an inverse variation, right? Okay, let me ask you another question then. This, I think this is inverse. I think it's inverse. Okay, but let me ask you an easy question. Anybody have a calculator handy? Probably not, okay? But I know you can do some of these. I'll help you out with that, okay? So, real quickly, tell me, what's one times five? That's easy, what's one times five? Yeah, what's five times one? Now, believe it or not, eight times 0.625, I don't know. That's what calculus is for, right? I bet it's five. Eight times 0.625 is five. And then what's 20 times 0.25? I bet it's 5. 20 times 0.25 is 5. So I think what I have is x times y equals 5, right? Which makes it which one? Makes it the inverse, right? Because our formula is if you've got x, y times a number, it's inverse. And if it looks like this, right? If it looks like this, it's probably inverse, so I think this one is an inverse variation. In fact, I know it is. Okay, last but not least. So in example 8, it tells me, okay, part of the hint here is it says x varies inversely, okay? So I'm going to start right off to do this problem as x, y equals some number, k. k is the constant of variation, okay? So I know this. X varies inversely with y. Let's just start off then. X, y equals k. So now if x is 2, let's plug that in. So if x is 2, when y is negative 3, right? I plugged in my 2, plugged in my 3. I can find out k is. So k is equal to negative 6. So my what they call the constant of variation is, is negative 6, okay? So I know that, find the constant of variation, there it is, okay? Constant of variation is negative 6. So the equation I have should be x, y equals negative 6, okay? All right, I got an equation. Now, let's just use it. So the last piece says, find y when x is 12. So I'm going to put 12 in for x. And I'm going to rewrite this as a 12 times y equals negative 6. And I can solve for y because I want to find y. I want to find y. So we'll divide by 12. And I'll get y equals negative 1 half. Okay. So that's all I have for homework. And I've got homework coming up. We have time to get a lot of it done, which is nice, huh? So, homework today is going to be out of your journal, page 172. We're going to do 1 to 17 all, which seems like a lot, but it's not all. It's not that much. 1 to 17 all, and our extra is number 18, okay? All right, let's see if I can get this. Not that bad.